everybody, I'm Sergio from Mobility Scooters Direct, here today to show you the Pride Mobility ZT10 Mobility Scooter. This is one of Pride Mobility's latest products. It was released in uh, late 2019, early 2020. They released it and first announced the, uh, the ZT10 at MedTrade. We were able to get some video and some picture. You might have seen it on the uh, product page or our blog. But we finally got one in the uh, showroom here and we wanted to demonstrate how it works, how to take it apart, show you some of the features. This is considered a heavy duty slash full size scooter. It's definitely not a lightweight compact one by any means. It can hold up to 400 pounds. And depending on the weight of the user, it goes about 18 to 24 miles on a full charge. You might notice it has a pretty impressive lighting package. It actually has uh, turning signals here, which I'm gonna back up a little bit and then uh, show you here. So, you know, if you want it to turn right, you can see the right turning signal blinking. Uh, and the same thing for the left, of course. Pretty neat little feature. I haven't seen any other scooters with this type of LED lighting. It's very similar to like a, a sports car. A lot of our customers love it. And of course the uh, Pride Insignia logo here is also lit up, looks great. Just like all the Pride scooters, it comes with a removable basket here, which pops on and off. And I'm gonna show you how to take this thing apart. So, you know, I'll leave the, the basket off for now and kind of show you a couple of the other features before we begin, begin disassembling it. Uh, right under, the dash, you've got this little lever, and this is actually the lever to control the infinite adjustment on the tiller here. So you can go out pretty far if you've got really long arms, or you can come in if you're, you know, a little bit shorter on and a little bit less reach. So when you're uh, taking it apart, you're going to use that lever here to bring it all the way down, and we'll get into that here in just a second. All right, so on the dash, you've got the traditional and all too familiar battery indicator. Red means it's dying, yellow means it's about halfway, and green means it's charged up pretty well. As it starts to get used, the lights will disappear starting from the right green. They'll start to turn off. When you get to the last yellow or the red, you definitely want to get it in and start charging it. If you wait till the, that the battery gets all the way to the last red, you're doing harm to your battery. That's not the way to take care of your batteries. Just like uh, gasoline in a car, you don't want to wait until it runs out completely. You always want to bring it home a little bit earlier and, and fuel it up, or in this case, charge it up. Uh, and that's how you're going to get the longest life out of your batteries. So try to practice that. Um, and the next thing you'll notice, is you've got two switches, one that pertains to the light. All the way forward is going to have just both the lights on. You've got the under storage light to see what you're doing down here in your storage cubby, and then the front lights. Uh, if you move it to the center, it's just going to have the under storage light, but the uh, headlights and the tail lights aren't on. And then if you move it down to the bottom switch, that's going to do the uh, hazard lights where basically the front and the back are pulsing. Uh, Jason, if you want to back up a little bit to show the, uh, the, the pulsating lights on the back. And earlier on in the video, we showed you the pulsing lights in the front. So. You know, depending if it's nighttime or daytime, you can use the light uh, options there. With the speed control knob, just like any other mobility scooter by Pride, uh, you've got speed options. All the way to the left is basically eco mode, where um, it's going to go a little bit slower. Uh, in the middle is kind of your average speed. And then to the right, you've got the NASCAR flag there indicating that it's in sport mode. Uh, you've also got the the control to independently turn on and turn off the under storage light to the left and turn signals which will operate the front and rear lights to signal a turn as well as the horn which is a standard beep horn uh, the delta tiller it kind of has some indicators here to show you that if you go forward with the left hand it's going to go forward and if you go back with the left hand, it's going to go reverse. That is switched on the right side, so you can use it independently with the right or left hand. It's meant for ambidextrous use. On the right hand side, if you go forward, it just simply goes in reverse, whereas going back goes forward. So it's flipped on the right hand side. And um, the ignition's on the right hand side here with the key, which just like any other key, comes with two copies. Also includes the charger and the user manual when purchased. The charging port 
for the scooter is located right here underneath the ignition and there is a very convenient USB port. That USB port is gonna deliver a charge to a cell phone or any other electronic device that uses a USB powered charging cable. To charge the scooter, you plug your uh, charger, which is an XLR type connection, right there, and that is gonna deliver a charge. Uh, it takes about six to eight hours to charge. We usually recommend overnight if it's you know pretty close to being dead in the red. Um, you know, if it just needs a little top off charge, you can leave it charging overnight. It's not gonna damage the batteries. It's a smart charger, which will automatically turn off once we recharge. Something else about this uh, scooter, like most Pride Mobility scooters, the uh, arms, they do fold up, but they can also be adjusted on the width. So let me just bring it around here to show you the back. You can see there are some tension adjustment knobs. So, you know, if you wanted to bring the seat uh, the, the arms for the seat out so that they were a little bit wider. You could loosen this up, bring it out, and then there are different pin slots here. So realistically, you could create a lot of room for yourself by bringing each armrest out a good inch or two. Um, that's a pretty nice feature, pretty convenient, giving the user a couple of different options for uh, the distance between each armrest there. Again, there's a pull pin and a, a tension adjustment knob. Same thing for the other armrest. Like all the mobility scooters made by Pride, you cannot operate the scooter unless it's in the drive position. Since this has the zero turn technology, which we'll get into next, it has two motors. Each motor works independently, and each motor has to be in the drive position. It's very easy to know if your scooter's in the drive position by giving it a push, it won't move. It's locked. The only way to move it is to use the actual throttle to go backwards or forward. So with the drive gear pushed forward into the neutral position, now I can just push the scooter manually in the event that the battery dies. Uh, or if you just want to move it around without turn, turning it on when you're storing it. So I'm going to put it back into the drive position and show you now I can't push it anymore, it's, it's locked. And that's the way it has to be in order for you to operate your scooter with the battery power. Now if you put it in neutral and you try to use the scooter, a lot of customers think that they come in here and think their scooter's not working or it's broken, but really they just got the, the control knob in the neutral position and if you turn it on, it won't work. That's just how these scooters work going to beat five times. And if you look in your user manual, five beats, the five beat sequence is an indicator that your, your scooter is not in the drive position. So I'm going to move it back into the drive position. I turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on. And now the scooter is not beeping and it works fine just as it's supposed to. That braking system or the, the locking position uh, feature is, is for safety, folks. If it runs out of battery on an incline or a hill, they don't want you rolling down the hill without being able to stop. It has automatic brakes, so uh, basically it's always going to be in the brake position unless you're giving it throttle. There's no actual brake for this scooter. It stops on its own and it's always locked in place for safety. Now there is a lever on the bottom of the seat, and that lever is basically used to rotate the seat or slide it forward and backwards a few inches. So one lever, the one on the left, allows you to slide back and forth, giving you that adjustment uh, option on the depth from the front to the back. And then the other lever on the right hand side, if you lift it, you can actually turn it and it locks into position 360 degrees every uh, I think it has about eight different slots that it can get locked into. So you can literally turn it around completely, have it locked in, and be able to see what's behind you, and you know, conveniently lift that lever up once you're done and just start looking forward again. So depending on where you are, if you want to get a view from a side angle or rear angle, you can easily just rotate your seat 
Now, the seat does fold down, so you know if you want to put it in the back of your car, it makes it a little bit easier. You can take out the armrests as well to uh, st stick it in the back of a compact uh, trunk space. We're going to go ahead and disassemble it now, so the first step is to raise uh, the seat and take it right out. Easy as one, two, three, you just pick it up. The next step, I'm going to turn the uh, battery off here. Uh, the next step is you want to go ahead and uncover the uh, battery area. And it's, it's really simple, guys. You just lift up this plastic shroud cover here. It comes right off very easily. Uh, there you can see the ZT10 insignia. Kind of identifying the scooter, which is uh, common across all the Pride Mobility scooters. So the first step that you'll want to do is you'll notice there's a buckle here. And we're going to go ahead and get the camera up closer so you can see what we're doing here uh, in just a second. We've got our battery uh, strap, which we're going to unbuckle here. That's just to keep your batteries from moving around. And uh, you want to keep them as close together as possible when you're taking it, uh, taking it out, moving it around. Um, to take apart the scooter, you're going to have to disconnect five harnesses. So if you can get in here over the top, you can kind of see there is one, two, three, four, and then one at the bottom, which is five connectors. And uh, taking them out is as easy as just pulling them up. So you want to get first the, the rear two, which is labeled one and two. So I'm just pulling up, get them out of the way. And you can kind of push the batteries apart too to make it easier. There's a third one in here, which actually has a clip. So you have to push it with your finger. See right here, you want to push that clip and then simultaneously pull. So that clip, it's a pressure tension clip that holds it into place. The fourth and the fifth do not have clips, so you can just pull up. The only one that has the clip is the third one in the middle. Once all the uh, cables are disconnected, the two for the battery, one for each motor in the back, and then the joystick controller uh, main connector here, you can actually start taking it apart. So grab it with one hand, the seat post, grab the clip on the other, pull up, and pull the seat post first up and then away. So I'm going to go ahead and put one hand on the seat post here and then the other hand on the latch which disconnects it. So as soon as you lift up, you just basically pull both parts apart from each other. Uh, it is a little easier to do if you take the batteries out, but you will need some tools to do that. And for the sake of keeping this video short and not having to you know, include any tools, we're going to skip that part. But if you want to take the batteries out so that it's a little lighter and easier to store, all you have to do is get a couple of simple home tools. Looks like a lug nut and a wrench. You can probably just use a set of pliers. Take the battery connectors off. Obviously, red goes to red, black goes to black, and they are labeled battery number one, battery number two, so you should be able to get it just fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it now. Again, you grab the seat post with one hand, take the lever, and then basically just pull apart. So first you want to lift up, and then slide away from the rear. And we'll go ahead and zoom in again so that you can see there's some indicators here when we put it back together. But for now, we'll leave it alone. And I just want to give myself some, some room so it's good six inches apart. Um, the next thing you'll want to do if you're going to transport this unit is lower the tiller all the way down. And basically, if you've got the, the, the strength or somebody to help you, it's pretty manageable. With the batteries, it's a lot heavier. So if you're you know, having a hard time, I would say get familiar with removing the batteries. We'll zoom in and we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier to transport this heavy duty scooter. I mean, the thing does weigh a good amount. I don't have the batteries offhand. I'll get those, the, the, the weight of the batteries in a second. But they do weigh around 20 to 30 pounds each battery. Plus the front end of the unit, it's, it's weighing a considerable amount. And we'll put those specs on the website in the content area. So. Now that we've got the thing disassembled and taken apart, and we've got the seat, the battery cover, the basket, all apart, the only other thing left to do is 
is really to remove the batteries. We're not going to show that in this video. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in and show you the connections in case you do want to take it out. Again, you just need a few very common tools that can be found in most homes. All right, so I want to give you an up close shot of how to take it apart and put it back together. We just did it uh, from far away, but I think getting up close and personal is really going to show you what's involved here. So I'm going to ask the cameraman, Jason, to zoom in a little bit. And you're going to notice there are two factors here. You've got a bar with green indicator strips on them, one on each side. And then you've also got these two little um, U-shaped hooks with green indicators on the other side, the front side of the scooter. So what's going to happen is these two um, clips that go on top of the bar in the same spot that the green indicator, they're going to fall right into place and the unit's going to lock into place. You want to make sure these wire harnesses are kind of spread out and you want one to go to the right, two to go to the left. And then basically you carefully, you know, if you've got the strength to do it by yourself, great, but it is very heavy with the batteries. Once that green line on both sides are lined up, you just drop it and it locks into place just like it did. So I'm going to take it apart one more time, pull up and then forward. These harnesses need to get connected after you connect it. So, you know, keep in mind before and after we'll, we'll have to make sure those are connected and removed if you're taking it apart. But again, putting it together and taking it apart is all about watching these components here. The clip or the hook that goes over the bar. One more time. Voila. So, you know, you might see that the harness gets kind of caught up, but there's enough room to wiggle them out. So the harnesses are exposed. I'm gonna lift the tiller. And now we need to get to work on connecting all of the different harnesses to the respective slots. Now they're all numbered. So what I recommend doing is starting with the ones in the back first. You've got this one, which is labeled number one. And if you look here, in the middle, you can see it's labeled number one pointing that way. So this one is for number one and this one is for number two. Here's number two. So let's start with number one. And if you can get over uh, Jason with the camera, you can see it only goes in one way. So there's number one. I want to give it a little snug afterwards and make sure it clipped good. Now number two, well there's actually no clip, I apologize, but you just want to make sure it's firmly pressed in there and all the way down so that that connection is solid, okay? So that's number one, number two taken care of. Here's the third one, which we'll want to make sure gets done here and goes around the side, but you can see number three right there, the blue indicator that matches with the blue indicator tag on harness number three. There is no wrong way to plug it in. It only goes in one way. We're in now with the third one. I'm going to move on to the fourth one, which is for the, the right-hand battery. Here's the connector, which connects to the battery. And then the fifth and last one is on the, the left battery. So you've got four and five, which connect to your batteries. And respectively, they go into the fourth and fifth receiver port, labeled four and five accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug these in. If you want to get over the top, Jason, here, it'd probably be the, the best bet. Again, there's no wrong way. White side on the white side, black side on the black side. Boom. In all the way. Easy as one, two, three. So now that we've got all five of the um, harness connectors in, I want to show you the battery terminal connectors just in case you want to take the batteries out. Makes it a heck of a lot easier to work with, reduces the weight by 50 or 60 pounds at least. So I'm going to uncover these connector caps and you're going to see here that there is a bolt and a nut. So if you want to use some uh, pair of pliers or grips, 
or if you have a very compact socket wrench, you can disconnect the nut and the bolt. There's a washer here, and then these wires will come free on each side. That allows you to take the batteries right out, and each battery is going to weigh approximately 20 to 30 pounds, depending on the type of battery you go with. Um, and, well, there's only one real type of battery. Um, we'll put the, wet, the, the weight on the website description for each battery, so you can actually see how much uh, weight you're going to save and how much more manageable it'll be. But we're skipping that in the video. I'm going to show you one more thing here before we move on to the next step. There is a battery strap, and this is really just a security measure to make sure your batteries aren't wobbling around. So you kind of make sure it's tight, and that's going to keep your batteries from wobbling around. So now that you've got the batteries back in place, it's all connected. Shroud cover is going to just slide right on as long as there's no uh, harnesses in the way it should just kind of fall right into place you see here it connects there it connects and on the other side as well it's got to got to pop it into place a little bit and this is it so now that uh, the battery shroud covers on we can pick up the seat again I want to show you up close the plug that goes the male end into the uh, female receiving end here just pops right in. There's, there's no secret to it. it. Just slides in and then drops into place. Now it's locked. Um, I do want to show you and demonstrate the turning ability of this scooter because that's really what makes this scooter so unique and so awesome. Jason, I'm going to ask you to back up a little bit so you can get the uh, full shot of this scooter in action as I'm turning it. Um, each wheel in the back has an independent motor. So like a power wheelchair, each wheel in the back will go the opposite direction of one another. And unlike any other scooter, that gives you the ability to rotate in place. So literally, I'm rotating in place right now. Whereas another scooter would be doing more of an orbit because it just doesn't have that ability to do the turning radius. So I've got much more turning power and turning ability than any other scooter. I can actually do a full rotation just by turning it all the way out. And that's something that you can really appreciate if you deal with scooters on a day-to-day -day because you know having a sharp turning radius is, is really important especially if you live in a, a home that has a lot of furniture or it's just not doesn't have the widest open floor plan so for that reason and many others we highly recommend the Pride Mobility ZT10 scooter it comes in this blue color a white and I believe a uh, third option, which is either black or red, you'll see it right on our website. Uh, we are offering this tax-free, sales tax, no sales tax whatsoever, free shipping and free accessories like always. We get them shipped out quickly. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Uh, it, it, you know, like we said, holds 400 pounds, goes about 18 to 24 miles on the full charge, depending on the weight of the user. Uh, it goes seven miles per hour, so that does give you an extra two to three miles per hour compared to most medical scooters. It's got a little bit of kick. It can keep up with someone on a bicycle that's going at a decent slow pace, not really a fast pace, but it's going to go a lot faster than your average scooter, which goes about three to five miles per hour that you see at the grocery store. Um, so if you have any other questions about this scooter, you can always call us, chat with us. Our sales representatives will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. Until next time, have a good one.